you know, Sharon, with addicts, with drug addicts, it, it's about a year before they're really able to do anything. They have to, you know, you, yeah, right. you came in the same way and yeah. your time was given to reading and praying and uh, was, was spent in the Lord. And they need that time. And we just, uh, we just keep going, you know, and, yeah. and uh, so many people getting saved and so many coming in and, and wanting to come in, we just have to turn people away continuously. There's just no way we can take them in. I know it. Now you're teaching school now. Amen. Now what do you tell your <laughs> pupils? I tell them, uh, you know, I tell them the Bible. I tell them the Word of God. And I'm so happy and so thankful that I'm able to do that because uh, I see these little faces, these little kids that would otherwise have had to go to public schools where they preach evolution and every other kind of amoral and ungodly thing. And I can see how their lives have been twisted up like mine was and, and completely lost in, in misery and in sin. And in there in our school, we preach the Bible. We, we tell them the Word of God. We tell them about creation, you know, how the Lord really created the earth, not this evolution garbage, you know, this... Uh, or the humanistic uh, side. You know, if you right. tell children that they derive from animals, they're going to act like animals. That's right. That's absolutely right. But, you know, we're able to shape little minds uh, according to how the, how the Lord would want them to grow up. And I tell you, I just love it. I love every minute of it, and it's so rewarding to me. And I'm so thankful. I've got a little boy here, and I'm so thankful he's going to be able to go into a school like that and not be thrown out into to the dogs, really. Not have to go through what you had to go yeah, through. Yeah, that's right. Sharon, your mother died with cancer. That's right. And your dad loves the church, doesn't he? Oh, he loves it so much, Susie. He just can't, he loves to come. He just comes and every time. And your grandmother, she just thinks it's so wonderful oh, she does. because she's raised in the old fundamental, not the new modernistic uh, churches. The churches that we are referring to here, we're talking about the new modernistic movement. Do you know, and so many of them, there was a survey taken recently of how many ministers, pastors in the modernistic movement actually believed in the divinity of Jesus Christ and how many really believe that he was begotten of the Holy Spirit, born of a virgin, died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins. And I tell you, the survey was staggering. Of men standing in the pulpit preaching the gospel that doesn't even believe that the truth, the divinity of Jesus Christ, that he is the divine one. Isn't that sad? And that's what people are being subjected to all over the world today. That's, that's the churches that we're referring to. And I'll tell you, we saw them. We saw many of them. All of us did. And here's Thaddy Mick. And Thaddy, you march at the church, don't you? And what do you sing? Marching. Well, what's the song that you sing? What do you sing? I wait you. Marching up the King's Highway. Every Sunday you march and sing that song, don't you? <laughs> These children uh, can say the, the cutest things in the world. Tony sings a song, I'll walk with God from this day on. So the little ones would hear Tony sing this song all the time, and they were singing the song, but they sing it, I'll walk with God on his day off. <laughs> <laughs> then we had one little one in school, and uh, the children uh, are supposed to learn a, a Bible verse every day. So the other children all learned their Bible verses, and uh, they stood up and they recited their verses. And this one, little Susie Scarcello, she wasn't going to be outdone. She hadn't learned her, her, her Bible scripture. So she stood up very dignified and she said, even a child shall be known by its babysitter. <laughs> it's like Bob's philosophy. It sounds profound anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> it's absolutely incredible some of the things that they say. We've brought you two more lives.
that have told you truthfully from the depths of their hearts and their souls what their lives were before and what they are today. You know, church people, and you may not think that it has anything to do with you. When you hear on television or you see in a publication, read in a newspaper about some young person being taken out of a church somewhere by legal means or kidnapped and the word the program used, there is no such word. The word is kidnap. And it doesn't make any difference what they're being taken out of. If they're being taken out of that group today, you're next. Believe me, you are. You're next. You'll be taken out of your church tomorrow. Do you know that it has become so easy for us to just turn our backs and walk away and say, that doesn't bother us? Now, yesterday in the Southwest Times record, Fort Smith, Arkansas paper, was a girl that was taken out of some religious group. I haven't the slightest idea of what it was and could care less. doesn't really make any difference. By her parents. Now, I don't know what those parents are. I know what a lot of them are that I've had dealings with. I know exactly what they are. I tell you that organized religion is behind the scenes with this thing. Otherwise, they wouldn't dare to attempt such a preposterous thing because every church in the nation would rise up immediately and there would be a stop put to it. They're behind the scenes with it. They push these radicals that they call deprogrammers. They're kidnappers. And do you know what the Bible says? about man-stealers? You open your Bible and you read what it says about man-stealers. Ed, what does the Bible say about man-stealers? It says they'll have their part in the lake called hellfire and brimstone. That's right. They'll have their part in the lake called hellfire and brimstone. Now, even to participate in anything like that, do you believe that it's going to happen to somebody else today I can assure you that I'm talking to people out there. I don't care what your age is. You sit back and fold your hands and allow this type of thing to go on. It's a matter of time until you will be the next one. You don't think so? Any time a nation is allowed to do such atrocities as this, that nation has fallen already. We're nothing but a number anymore. There isn't any identity. There are no freedoms. There are nothing. We are a number. And if you believe for one moment that you're just simply going to disregard these things and say, oh, well, my church this and my church that, your church is not excluded from anything. Once they set a precedence of these laws, then any person can say, that uh, you're not capable of making up your own mind or making your own decision and have you taken out of any church they want to have you taken out of. Now, believe me, because I'm telling you the truth. That's what they're doing. They're targeting groups that are not in organized religion until the laws are on the books. And when they are, your turn is next. One of these days you're going to remember I heard her say that, but I didn't believe it was possible. You believe that it's possible because the Bible tells you so. We're heading for the mark of the beast to the end as fast as we can go. We're already nothing more than a number. We're, we have no identity any longer. We're nothing but a federal government number. And now, already in the process, through the computer system, through, through banking, through computer, through all these things is bringing it right into focus. It isn't something that's way out there in the future. It's now. It's today. And these very decisions that you sit back and you allow one freedom after the other to be taken. What do you expect? 
Don't you know the inevitables, the end result of a nation that would close its eyes? It wouldn't make any difference what kind of a group, a church these people were in, whether the church was right or whether the church was wrong. When it becomes the business of the authorities, the government and the states, to have any rulership whatsoever over your religious freedoms, you are already a communist nation because these are the same laws that are in the Soviet Union and in every communist country in the world. I've talked to people from there. I've talked to people that have been locked up in communist concentration camps, and they tell me that that's exactly the way it happened in every country that has fallen. Our freedoms are so precious, so precious to us. I was raised an orphan. My father died, he gave his life for this nation. I'm a Southerner, born and raised in the old fundamental, traditional Christian churches, and I thank God for that. And my father gave his life to preserve my right to be able to do that, to attend the old Baptist Brush Arbor revival meetings, to attend the old Methodist revival meetings. And no one ever told me that I was a Nazarene and I couldn't go over to the others because part of my family were Baptist and some Methodist. They actually came out of the old John Wesley Methodist Church years ago. No one ever told me that I wasn't allowed to do that. We all did that at one time. We went from one revival meeting to the other. My father died to preserve and to give me that right to do that. And then my Savior died to fulfill that right for me. For he said in his word, He who the Son has set free is free indeed. And I am free in Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you, I don't want something coming at me that calls itself a deprogrammer because I'm afraid they'd get their hands full. I know what God says they are. He says that they're going to be cast out into hell, out into outer darkness. My time's all gone until this same time. The Lord bless you and goodbye.